Hello and welcome back to Angels with Scaly Wings, the Let's Play Blind Veneer Rambler. Right then, before we proceed onwards with where we left off, um, I just wanted to make a few uh, comments to the comments that was left in the last video. Um, in that, some of the things I said in the last video in terms of the whole, you know, ooh, the whole, you know, idea that we can go back in time and, and, and cross time and space just along the time coordinates as opposed to the space coordinates, although I suppose you might have to cross the space coordinates as well to walk across the field to get to the portal, but you know what I mean. Is that mechanic what really is governing the ability for the game to allow us to go back in time in the first place? You know, I made that sort of connection. And apparently, yes, that is true. So the whole uh, system mechanic of you can go back to sort of change your decisions is actually based in the game's lore on the whole portal technology thing, um, which I think is really, really, really cool. The other thing to mention, though, is the... Um, event that happened with Bryce. Apparently that is kind of, well, the thing you were meant to do. Because if you or if I had decided to go in first instead, apparently we would have been blown up, it would have been game over and we'd have to start the whole game again. So apparently what happened with Bryce was kind of like, oh it's your first run is it? Oh well in that case then you're meant to do this. Um, so, um, it kind of makes sense in terms of first run story mode that that would be the case. However, I have been informed these are reasons to replay the game again and again and again when you've done a first playthrough because apparently because of this time mechanic they've introduced in the game and the way that the game allows you to go back and reload save points, even though that is just a fundamental game mechanic anyway, uh, but they've tied it in with the lore instead, which is not very often in other games, um, this is all going to play a part. So it has, after the comments have been said in the last video, basically told me that we will need to replay this a few times because it is actually part of the whole experience. It's not just a question of, oh, we played through the game once, you got this ending, did you? Oh, right, well, would you like to play it again and make different decisions to see what other endings you would have got. No, it, is, it does, and I know people have said this before, but it really does now all tie in to some grand true ending, uh, which I would like to get. So I will say this now, ladies and gentlemen, that replays of this will be done. Um, I'm not going to be put off simply because this is all part of this unified experience. A bit like Doki Doki Literature Club, um, only without the messing around with the save files and stuff. Although that was quite sophisticated and I liked it. Uh, at least this one is kind of like all based on a single narrative. So actually these repeat playthroughs we do have to do um, is actually really all part of one big giant playing through in the first place. That's how I see it. So really, because they've made this whole uh, reload your game data and change time mechanic actually part of the mechanics of the story, actually in a way you could argue that really all this uh, replaying stuff we might have to do, well we will have to do, um, and doing the story again and again actually doesn't really count as replays because ultimately it's actually all part of a single experience if you want to get to the ending of the actual game. So in a way, it doesn't really violate my rule of I don't like it when games generally, you know, you play it one way and you get an ending and then, you know, you have to go back and play it again and again to get other endings uh, and that's all you get is other endings. This ties it all in to make one grand ending, a bit like in a way Hyperdimension Neptunia recently with a few choices you can make. Although with that you didn't have to complete the game to get multiple endings, so actually yeah, no, it's nothing like that. Completely ignore what I just said there. This is really just one big game and it's just one big playthrough, so the whole point of the game is to replay it again and again, and I don't really count that as the whole, oh, if you have to replay it to get different endings, like um, Papers, Please, for example, that's a better example. It isn't, and there is other reasons for that, but I'm not going to keep going on about that because let's find out more later. Um, so what we are going to do is I actually called quite a lot of stuff, I wouldn't say correctly, but I'm on the right track if that makes sense. Although the administrator may not necessarily be a man, it could be a woman because it's only a mask. Mm. And also there was a bit of a spat, well I won't say a spat, but I, I, I kind of had a spat sort of thing in my head going. In that when I was complaining about, look, you, 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 Mr. Administrator, you're an engineer. Although you make uh, bioweapons, so you could argue you're a bio-engineer. Um, you still call yourself a colloquial engineer. You did argue that the AI you had, or had access to, does have uh, a fundamental knowledge to help um, developing... Uh, species of animals other than humans to be more civilized and be like us 
surely they would have, or the AI would give these civilizations the basic needs to defend themselves with basic things like weapons. Possibly including a gun type weapon. I don't buy for a fact that this administrator guy with his AI, AI cannot build a gun. I think that's very weak storytelling. Yes, he's a bioengineer, sure, but he has a huge knowledge of physics. So, what more do you need in terms of physics intellect to know how, know, how, how to, to understand how a gun works if you could do space and time? Not a whole lot, to be honest with you. Mm. I mean, yes, it's not li linked to space time travel, but it's still physics that if you can comprehend this whole idea of general relativity and special relativity, you can certainly comprehend how guns work. And if he couldn't, his bloody AI can. So I'm sorry, this whole Reza has a gun. This is terrible. Oh, bollocks to it. No, I think that's a bit weak. But anyway, it's really only a nitpick. I I'm just disagreeing with what people said about that. I personally think that unless a specific reason comes up later why they can't do it, it's a bit weak storytelling. But then again, considering I s it's not spoiling the game for me, I'm not going to say, well, because of that nitpick, that whole game's rubbish. No. The rest of this has been fantastic, it's been superbly written, it still is being superbly written, nothing's perfect, there are going to be, with superbly written games, niggles here and there. Like I said, Snatcher that I played before, uh, in the past, which is, you know, like a text adventure, graphic adventure, a bit like this, or oh, a visual novel, or however you want to call these things now these days. That was a beautifully written game, and I loved that to bits, and even that had niggles in it, and I still think it's one of the best games ever made. Uh, or at least I've experienced in my time, it's in my top five list. Um... Yeah, it's, it doesn't matter. Nothing's perfect, and I'm aware of that. But it's just, as a human being, that does it isn't completely rational or logical. There are, with certain games, certain niggles or certain imperfections that can really grate me and can ruin a game for me. I'm not saying it's biased, uh, unbiased. I'm not saying it's unprofessional. I'm saying I'm a human being. I like and dislike things. I don't claim to be an expert. I just claim to know what I like and don't like, and I will defend it to the hills like anybody would when they're very passionate about something. So there you go. Anyway, I'm rambling more and more and more. Let's let's crack on, sorry. With that being said and done. So, uh Bryce is dead, which is sad. Um and um that's about it really. Yeah, nothing really is going very well at the moment. But things pretty suck. So we can either meet with Remy or we can meet with Lorem or we can order some lunch. I haven't forgotten that. Um I think what we're gonna do is meet with Lorem. Because I want to keep things consistent. We're going to kind of have a sideline Aldine and lunch for now. Adine, not Aldine. Adine for lunch. Um, I want to talk to Loren a bit more. And that is a nice pad, by the way. That's a very simple sort of studio-like pad, but I like it. Simplicity can be quite good. I do like also eclectic over-the-top things, but that's quite nice. Oh, uh, right. Anyway, I'll skip that speech because it doesn't really matter. It's just saying, hey, come on in. Thanks. Honestly, I can't believe you agreed to do this again. Oh, don't mention it, it's my pleasure. Now that I've had a chance to work through everything from last time, we can do some real work. Ooh, sounds great. I did a staggering amount of research on mythical humans. Here, let me show you some of the stuff I found. Sure. We sat down at the coffee table. Lorem opened up a laptop and started to type away. Seeing the laptop brought back memories. In our world, they had become obsolete a long time ago. <laughs> Actually, speaking of which, at work today, uh, somebody, for some bizarre reason, uh, came into the uh, staff room and brought in an Amstrad uh, GT65 monitor and an Amstrad CPC 8-bit 64K home computer system from the past. And I was like, oh my god, that's so cool! And they were like, yeah, I'm just using it for a project for somebody, I'm just minding. I was like, yeah, but that's an Amstrad CPC, oh, that's so cool, I can't believe it! And then we had a nice little chat in the staff room with the other members, uh, with the, my, my colleagues about 8-bit um, um, computers and stuff. It was really cool. Uh, talking about like the VIC-20 and the ZX Spectrum and the Commodore 64. It was amazing how they all talked about it and remembered it from their youths, and I liked that. And I'm one of the younger colleagues in my in my workplace, but um, it was really cool. I liked it. It was just so cool to see. I have never seen an Amstrad CPC in real life, and it just happened to come in. I thought, well, that's random. But it was really cool. And there was a game with it as well, and I can't remember what it was bloody called. One of the colleagues said he played it. Oh, it was like a space duty game. I can't remember. Anyway, just thought I'd mention it, because that, that was just quite funny. Um, anyway, uh, before I show you these images, I should probably tell you that some of them are really weird. Just don't take them the wrong way. Look, if it's pornographic images, trust me, I have seen weird stuff. It's going to take a lot for me to say, Whoa! You already told me about the four-headed human. I think I can handle this. In my world, we have dragon dildos. Alright. <laughs> that's all oh, right. That's fine. I saw one of the old Star Trek episodes from the first series where Kirk was, like, on this, um... I don't know, he was like on a planet and he was on his own. There was this reptile creature, it was just a guy in a suit. It was 
awesome. It was a great episode. And it just reminded me of the reptile guy. So, that doesn't look very human to me, but I do remember Captain Kirk taking on with it. He looks very friendly, though, and he looks very attractive. I'm not going to go down the creepy way. Let's, let's keep it, um... Let's keep it clean here, for once. Um... Uh... I'm going to be sarcastic. Uh, I'm going to be jokey. He looks very friendly. This one is supposed to be one of our ancestors. Ancestors? Well, it does remind me of some of the dragons I've seen here, but I'm not sure what humans have to do with this. You remember the myth about a creator turning into a dragon, right? Uh, ooh, it's been mentioned, I think. I don't know if I actually know it all the way through, but... Um, I think if I say the first one, he might repeat it, just for the sake of clarity. So, I don't think I've heard that one before, even though it does ring a bell, but I do have false memory syndrome. I told you about it last time. Fuck! That went wrong. The short version is that some believe we were created by a human. What happened to that human after we were made is a mystery, though. Some think they turned into a dragon and lived among us. I'm just going to uh, click outside of the thing. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, just a pop-up came up. I couldn't read the text. Now, here is an interesting question. What species did that human turn into? There are a number of dragon species nowadays that aren't genetically compatible with each other. Did the human choose one of them? Did they, perhaps, procreate? <gasps> are you saying I can have sex with dragons? A shared ancestor is one option. This would mean that the different species split after the human's involvement in our creation. It's just what us humans do. As soon as we come up with a, or a meet up with an intelligent species that's unlike our own but has similar traits, we bang them. That's pretty much how it goes. If human DNA was involved in some way, that might explain how a different species came to be. Take a fire ancestor of ours and apply various amounts of human DNA, the result would be a number of different species, each with a different amount of resemblance to humans. Ooh, interesting. I can't remember though if the an I I'm sure the administrator talked about the, the how they did the dragon thing in detail. I've completely forgotten. It's been a couple of days and I've been very busy at work, so my memory is all over the place at the moment, so I do apologise. Now, it has been said that an upright stance and being able to walk on two legs is a more human trait. Well, most humans walk on two legs, so that is true. In any case, it's one of the things that makes humans unique. As a result, some people believe that certain species share more traits with humans than others. They think it makes them more noble or something. Luckily, this doesn't happen often. Yes, I'm afraid in Animal Farm, we're all equal, but some animals are more equal than others. You can walk on two legs as well, though, right? Sure, in this theory of shared human DNA, this puts me somewhere in the middle, since I have wings and horns. You can see that. Here, look at this one. Ooh, that is kind of creepy. Kind of funky. That is kind of creepy, I will admit. Artist probably sneezed on that day. I wouldn't want to live in the same town as that fellow. I'm not sure if this is much closer than the previous one. What's with the little horns? Uh, I, I shall be funny again. Well, you can't always choose your neighbours, and this won't be any different in my game. I'm not sure he's a particularly friendly one, though. Actually, I think this is supposed to be a human female. Interesting. I'm sure there are people out there that like that sort of thing. There are some that don't think humans are friendly at all, though. No, they're generally right. We are dickheads. It's just, it's just common fact, really. Even dickheads to each other. Mm. Really? So far, I've only heard positive things about us. Some interpretations of our myths don't exactly paint you in the best light. There are also people who oppose the idea of human worship and what their involvement has meant for us. No, I'm fine with that. I think they should. I think they should go on their merry way and do their own thing. In what way? They say the human interference was unnatural and that we need to get back to our roots. Oh, well, why not? And how do you think they can do that? Apparently, it means refusing to use modern technology and living in caves or the wilderness again. Yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah, I, I think after a while you'll probably, probably start getting those craving pangs and uh, yeah it's like saying you know hey we're going on a camping holiday in the great outdoors and you go out there and you're literally doing nothing but pooping in grass and walking around in trees and getting bit by everything and uh, running away from animals and staring at actual living birds you know not birds and female birds I mean birds as in flying things and everybody thinks that's fantastic, and they've all got binoculars and books where they tick them off. And like, for fuck's sake, you're a human! God damn it, that's a sad existence. I know I'm sad. But Jesus, come on, grow up! You know? Ugh. But if you like that sort of thing, I'm so that's fine. You can like that sort of thing. I'm okay. It, that, that's fine. I'm not excluding you or anything. I'm just saying you're weird. That's all. Um, like an animal. Pretty much. Most of us think that people are crazy, though. Well, that is very true. 
They sound like the part for sure. They're harmless, really. You probably won't see one of them around here anyway. No, because they're probably living in a cave. This is an interesting style, though. Do you know how these pictures were made? No, I'm sure the information was provided when I looked them up in the library, but I didn't copy all of that. And you're using these as references? I may do with what I can get. Oh, fair enough, God, so I can't uh, fault them for that. Maybe now you can see why I wanted your help, though. Alright, what do you need me to do? I just want to make some quick sketches. You can stand over there by the wall. Okay, I can certainly do that. I walked up to the spot he indicated. When I took my place, I saw that he had laid out a number of pens, paper, and other art supplies on the table. Ooh, this is going to take a while, isn't it? I'll try to be quick about it. Don't you want me to strike a pose or something? Flex my guns? Uh, t pose should be good to get started. Oh. Okay, then. What's that? Oh, come on, you don't know what a T-pose is? Just point your arm sideways to look like a giant T. Uh, come on, Neo, that is really fucking crap, that is. You're a biologist, sociologist, psycho, whatever you are, and you don't know what a T-shape is. Fuck me, I don't have any qualifications in art, or even the slightest bit artsy, and yet I know what a bloody T-shape is. It's such an embarrassment. <laughs> oh, I get it. Raising my arms to the sides, I wondered how long this would take. Well, you're a biologist, so you can start measuring how well your arms are good at staying up while your body does anaerobic respiration and creating lactic acid to cause absolute massive pain in your muscles. Make an experiment out of it. Great, now try and stay still as possible. I'll try. As I wasn't allowed to move my head, I stared at Lorem sketching my figure. This went on for a few minutes until I suddenly heard the sound of a door opening. Omin oh, hello. If that's a male dragon again, my sexual things all over the place at the moment. Oh, it's Ipsum! Oh, I think we bumped into him before, didn't we? I can't remember the voice I gave him. Shit. Well, it would have been crap anyway, so let's just carry him along. Hey, Loem. Oh, right. Your ramble was going to... Oh, I think it was like a sort of, yeah, oldie gentleman or something. Oh, right. Your ramble was going to visit today. Oh, I totally forgot about that. Are you still working with the police? Yeah. They want me to pose as a Z-shape tomorrow for zebra crossings. Well, you don't mind if I take a seat, right? You just want to study Neo Ramble. <laughs> like you aren't doing that already. Uh, besides, his room is mine as much as it is yours. I'll just watch and be quiet. I thought you had experiments to run. Yeah, they are running. I'd rather not be confined to my tiny room for the next two hours, staring at the ceiling and wait for them to finish. You know, like a proper scientist who just walks away from the experiment when they're doing it, and just, just in case anything should happen to go wrong, they won't be there to fix it. Oh no, no, it'd be fine. But no experiments on Neo Ramble. Oh, well, I'll just sit there and maybe take a few notes. I'm sorry, Neo Ramble. This is my roommate and long-time best friend, Ipsum. Nice to meet you, Ipsum. His scientific bluntness may be off-putting, so please bear with him. Look, I've been look, hanging out with Anna. Trust me, I can handle it. It's fine. Ooh, speak for yourself. So much for those two being best friends. Lemon returned to his drawing, silence only being interrupted by the strokes of his pen. Ooh, something interesting happened at work today. Did they finally figure out who, uh, it was you who was playing all those pranks? No, no, they'll never catch me. <laughs> and I was talking with a colleague about the humans here, and we all finally mentioned that Neo Ramble was going to come over. Oh, you fucking tip. I don't like where this is going. Uh, well, some, hour, uh, some hours later, Anna barges into my office and says Neo Ramble is off limits for anyone besides her, as far as tested experiments are concerned. Ooh, she likes us. I mean, I know... You could argue purely for scientific things, but yes, yes, I'm not saying there isn't scientific reasons for it, she's just defending her research, but she fancies her, she's getting jealous. Yes, I've planted my seed, it is growing. Well, I'm not taking any samples, I can hardly be blamed for just looking at Neo Ramble. Oh, well, yes, but that makes me wonder. Well, Neo Ramble, do you agree to visit her and undergo a rigorous testing regimen? Uh, yeah, I did. Oh, well, well good luck to you then. Oh, and, uh, Lorem, have you seen my, uh, Exomem sphere recently? I just rolled away under the sofa last time. God seemed to find it. Uh, didn't you take it with you when you went to the park the other day? Oh, yes, yes, I did. Well, that's the last time I saw it. Oh, I must have lost it then. Nah, I've already searched the whole apartment. Did you go into my room? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> yeah, fail. Maybe someone found it. I had it registered in my name when I got it, so if anyone found it, it should show up sooner or later. What well, is an Ixumen sphere anyway? Uh, it's just a glorified toy for grown-ups, really. It's it's a, it's basically the human. It's like the dragon equivalent of a dragon dildo, except I imagine it's in the shape of a human, so it's a human dildo. 
accept your conception of humans is a bit odd, but even so, I can accept that. No, I have no idea what you're talking about. An X-Men Sphere is a very sophisticated tool with a countless number of uses, including self fortification I mean, the uh, the uh, tool fortification Like what? Can you put it up your butthole? No, I can levitate and follow you around, take photos, you can even use it as a calculator. Wow. Didn't know Dildies were that sophisticated. Making it a glorified toy for grown-ups. I use it for my experiments. Well, if they can take photos, I wouldn't need to stand around like this. That is, if we had it here now. Oh, it's a great companion for all situations in life. Like told me the other day, I was able to uh, take a few pictures of a naughty couple in the park, if you know what I mean. Oh, Jesus Christ, the noughts on that last dragon. Oh, very nice, very nice. I put that in my personal collection. Though. It's much easier to draw from a live model than from a photo, though. Easier for you, maybe. Oh, stop your grumbling near around me, you twat. Come on. I hope this doesn't take much longer because my arms went numb a while ago. Uh, yeah, I think you can relax for now. I'm nearly done with this one. A tingling sensation went up my arms as I relaxed. I don't know, Neo, you should know that. Again, we mentioned it earlier. Slowly, I began to regain feeling in them. Alright, now turn around. I thought we were done already. Not unless we want our humans to lack a backside. Ah, so that's what all this is about. You want to, uh, you want to take some uh, backside sketches, do you? Mm, I should have brought the camera. Oh, you know what I mean. I know exactly what you mean. Is it my turn to draw you now? That's not how it works. Who wouldn't mind getting a portrait of myself? I can already see it. A light shining from above, caressing my luscious mane, highlighting each lock as they interplay. This is going to be a long day. It depends on how fast you are. As I was now facing the wall, I couldn't see what Lorem and Ipsum were doing, but I started to get strange sensations in my butt. Kind of similar to the tingling sensations I had in my arms just a minute ago. After a few seconds of silence, I heard some whispering coming from the couch. What are you talking about? I didn't want to be rude, I was just curious about your vestments. He said, and I quote, This would be more interesting if it wasn't for those clothes New Rampel is wearing. Oh boy, have we got some perverts here. Oh, I see how it is. <laughs> Should I act naive? Nah, I'll, I'll just sit and look. No, I'm just saying it would be hard to study an insect if there's a piece of cloth draped over it. Wearing that much just seems odd to me. If humans wear clothes like this, it's only appropriate to depict them as such. And my scientific curiosity shall remain unsatisfied. Because Neo Rambo's not here to do that, you would get in big trouble with Annie. Ooh, we actually have a big variety of vestments, I could tell you about it. Sounds good, but not right now, I have to finish this up first. Oh, alright then. So, Ibsen, I heard a lot about experiments and science now, but what do you actually do? I apologise for talking to the wall and sounding muffled when I say that. I work in the facility as a biologist with a, a minor in physics. In addition to the office, I also have my own setup here at home. I assure you it's properly isolated from the rest of the apartment, and even has a fume hood to prevent accidents. But I only use it for the smallest of experiments, uh, usually things unrelated to my job. Ooh, sounds interesting. Don't get him started, or we won't hear the end of it. Well, maybe you'd like to talk about your hobby instead, Lorem. Isn't this already a hobby? I guess you could say so. I was talking about his other hobby, though. Oh. That. I don't know. It's a little embarrassing, to be honest. There's no need to be embarrassed about your hobbies. As I completely walk into this one. But he likes flowers. Once even made a crown out of daisies. Coolest thing in the world, I tell you. Don't listen to him. He usually only tells half the story. I like flowers and I like petals. What's the other half, then? I have an extensive love for botany. Is it botany or botany? I think it's botany, isn't it? The urban fern he keeps in his room must be the happiest plant alive. I find gardening to be very relaxing, especially when the birds are singing in the morning. It's so nice to go out there with a nice cup of tea and work in the garden of our apartment building. Oh god, you, you're British. Oh no! Bloody Britain. That's the one thing that of Britishness that I can't do is gardening. I hate gardening. And I know that uh, everybody around the world will do some sort of gardening. I know, I know. But it's very British to go out and do some gardening with a cup of tea when the weather is overcast. I would bloody hate it. Although, I have to say, I did go through a phase where I kept a couple of houseplants in my bedroom. They did die in the end, but they lasted at least a few months. But, um, I think it must be an age thing. I think the older you get, then you kind of, like, feel... I don't know. I think it is. I think it's an age thing, because I notice it's usually older people. Some young people do garden. Don't get me wrong. 
but, and, and some uh, men have to guard them to impress their missus or their missus impressing their missus or husbands or whatever you know what I mean you know you live in this whole world where you can shag anybody now and anything um, but the point being is is, is uh, well, we used to do that anyway didn't they back in the day um, but the point being is it's very prominent um, the, the, the point being is yeah I suppose they do that but it's like forced labour you know f- f- fucking hate gardening just leave us alone Occasionally, the only thing I do, like, if I have to do gardening, I like hacking things up the it. I need to feel manly doing it, but still. Which reminds me, Ibsen here has quite an extensive tea collection. Oh, God, I like tea. I do like tea, but I'm not a tea fanatic. I don't care. Although, I'm not sure if he prefers to hoard tea or gadgets. It's a mystery. Ah, oh, yeah, there's going to be a model of the X-Men sphere that can actually make tea. That's going to be a must-buy. Can he also make cups, or are you supposed to sip it out of the sphere itself? Damn you, silly. It comes with a cup. Yeah, you two just sound like an old couple. Couple? Us? No, not really. We've known each other for a long time, though, if that counts. Yeah, it basically sounds like you're an old couple. I think it does. By the way, Ipsum, you're not from here, right? Man, yeah, what's that supposed to mean? Well, you look nothing like any other dragon I've seen here so far. I suppose that's true for Lorem as well. You're both pretty small. But you, Ipsum, also have hair. That's That's certainly new. That's not as unusual as you might think, but you're right, there aren't many of us in these parts. I imagine being smaller than the rest of the population would come with its own challenges. Like, how do you reach for those beans on the shelf? It's not that big of a deal. Something's unreachable for me. I can fly. That's actually a very good call. Fair play to you, Lorem. Touché. This pub is actually intended to house one dragon of a bigger size. That not only makes it fairly cheap, but it's also big enough for both of us. There's only one thing I've been wondering. How do you even sit in one of those chairs? Wouldn't the back seat cause problems with your tails? I see what you mean. For me, it's never been a problem because most chairs are bigger than I am. It's just a question of getting into the right position. Well, this may be different for those who mostly walk on four legs, but they don't usually use chairs like these at all. I've seen a few try, though. No, I suppose if they want to imitate humans this way, they can't stand or walk like a human, they'll, they'll try to sit like one. With varying results, some I've seen look really funny, trying to fit in chairs they're too big for, or sitting in odd ways that certainly don't work with their anatomy. I see. Lorem, you asked me about breath weapons last time, but I don't think you ever told me if you had one. Uh, probably because it's not worth mentioning. It may only be a very small flame, but it can get very hot. Oh, it could be like a lighter, so I wonder if you've discovered cigarettes and smoking. Eh, there you go, it could be a lighter. What about you, Ibsen? Yes, Ibsen, what about you? <laughs> my breath breath but uh, sorry. <clears throat> it's difficult to do voice, I've still got this cold. <clears throat> my breath weapon is elocution, since words are more powerful than anything else. <laughs> uh, same as mine then. <laughs> Sick burn. Alright, I'm done with this one, you can turn around. Really? But staring at the wall was so much fun. Oh, I'll just say sure. But I don't want to be too sarcastic. Let's make one more. Maybe something dynamic. Ooh, how dynamic are we talking about? Uh, something that isn't static like the reference models I just did. You can strike a pose, something that's just you. Oh, all right. What kind of pose should I go for? <laughs> uh, a normal pose, but that's very boring. A thoughtful pose, everybody does that. Or a swimwear pose, oh yeah. You know what I mean? Like one of your... Wait, what? Uh, forget what I just said. Sure. By the way, look at the groceries where you came home from work. Uh, yes, just as usual. Are you too sure you're not in a relationship? Oh, you certainly am. Actually, Ipsum is in deeply love with his home laboratory. Oh, really? I'm not even going to deny that. When I'm not working on something at the office, I do so here. What are you currently working on, then? I've been looking into the physics of teleportation. Oh, you're talking about the portal, right? <laughs> well, I don't have permission to even approach the portal, so I have to resort to a theoretical discussion on its mechanics and make with what I can pull off in my home laboratory. Maybe I could tell you a few things. I got a fucking lecture on it in the last video. I had to comprehend everything as best as I can before my brain exploded. I need to get it out somehow. No, that won't be necessary. I've already read all the available test reports. Okay, then. Who oh, well, using the portal could be incredibly dangerous. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Well, you don't have a complete understanding of what the portal actually does and what it means for our world at large. In order for a portal to function, a natural wormhole is required. It's trapped and then becomes the portal's entry. Portal manipulates the wormhole's exit. This way, something can be sent to whichever destination is chosen. Yeah, I got the lecture. It's fine. I don't... don't need it. No, there's a theory about the purpose of the natural wormholes in the universe. It states that they act as the support pillars of the space-time continuum. 
Oh, how so? Don't feed into it! Don't, don't, Leo, don't feed into it. We had this all last time. I don't need any more. My brain can't take it. Mm, how should I explain this? I think the video game analogy worked pretty well. Damn, well, sure, in a video game, what happens when you meet the edge of a map? You hit a wall? Uh, that happens in some games, but in others. Oh, you reappear on the opposite side. <laughs> right. How, how does this happen? If our world was a perfect sphere, someone could just keep flying in the same direction and eventually they'd end up in their starting point again. Sure. This is just a result of physics. The abstraction of a video game uh, doesn't quite work like that. They don't try to replicate a spherical world, but use a 2D plane instead. This is getting confusing, please stop. <laughs> Imagine a piece of paper with a world map printed on it. Yeah, I, no, I know where you're going with this. I think lots of people know where you're going with this. I don't need to know. Oh, God. Right. Well, it shows the entirety of the world. It's just a simple flat piece of paper rather than a sphere, right? Sure. Well, let's just assume that in a game, our world map looks like that. Now, what happens if we approach the edge and walk over? Is it that we are teleported to the opposite side? Okay. This doesn't actually make the game world a sphere, but rather a torus. A torus? You know, like a donut. That's the comparison you want to make. Okay. I didn't make it, you'll remember. Now, now things are going to get really complicated. God damn it. Are you familiar with the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics? I am actually, yes. I got a quantum. I, I, I actually studied it in my physics degree and got very good. No, I got first. Uh, what did I get in it? I got a first overall in quantum mechanics, although I only did quantum mechanics one and two. I didn't go too far with it. Like, I got as far as. Um, Momentum, I think it was, and uh, you know, doing matrix equations with it—that was as far as I got. Well, let's say I'm not. It says every single time a choice is made by an actor, that uh, possesses free will. The universe splits off into different branches. Yes, the many worlds theory. I know that. Yeah, this means of every choice you have made, there is just a branch of the universe where you made a different decision. It also points to the whole idea that there's no such thing as free will, because every decision potentially has been laid out for you, and all you do is you just flip between the timelines until you get to the right one. Ha! Scary. I see. No, I can't communicate with these other branches in any way. We just don't know what could happen if you made a different decision just this morning. You could have made an educated guess, but the only person who truly knows what would have happened is that alternate you who has made the decision is living with the consequences. Game, are you trying to be meta by trying to make out that I'm having to be stuck with my decisions and you've got a fancy way of trying to fob off the whole don't reload your game because then it might fuck up the story because we're trying to be clever. Look, don't, 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 okay? I know a lot of people who've played this game probably don't think about these things on a regular basis, so I will admit I'm in the very, oh, it's a very small minority of players, but the minority nonetheless who do know about these things. Please, please, please don't start rubbing it in my head. I know you're not doing it intentionally on purpose. I know, I know you're just trying to be as informative as possible to players of said genre of games. I, I know about this. It's okay. Ah, <sighs> why do I complain? I don't know. That's only a game, isn't it? That is, unless we can communicate with those other branches. Oh, well, there's a barrier that prevents us from doing that. Those barriers made up of wormholes. How does that work? It's very similar to the Taurus world model as used in games. As we approach the edge of our own world, the barrier causes us to end up on the other side instead. Does this mean we get teleported to the other side like in video games? Well, not necessarily. It would just be as correct to assume that our universe is shaped like a Taurus. So, which is it then? Do we get teleported or not? No, it depends on how you look at the wormholes as function. Now imagine this sheet of paper is the entirety of our work. Oh, fuck. I took a sheet of paper from the home stack and showed it to me, marking a spot near the edge with a pen. And this is where you live. Unfortunately, your workplace is here on the other side. You drew an X close to the right edge of the paper. If the world was flash, this would be very unfortunate. However, if the world was a torus, the left and right edges would be connected. You could take the shorter route by to work by going over the edge. And let's say this is only possible because wormholes connect these two edges together. If you happen to be right at the very edge and looked beyond, everything would be look perfectly fine for you. Given that these wormholes stay in their place, you'd never know that the world is actually flat, and that you could only travel to the other side because the wormholes connect the edges. You'd think that the world is a torus. Right. However, what if the wormholes seem to actually bring you to the other side by teleporting you, but instead just bend the paper into the torus shape and hold the edges together? If these wormholes failed or were displaced, the paper would have fall, throwing the world into disarray. Yeah, that's what the wormholes in the prior actually do. I'm losing his voice when I'm really struggling. I'll stop now, actually, just for a bit. They are what hold everything together. So they're really more like glue. Uh, if that's what's for them, the overall construct would collapse in on itself. What construct? Uh, the entirety of space-time. Now, if these theories are true, that would mean using a portal damages the barrier. 
Yeah, each time the portal is activated, the wormhole used for the teleportation is displaced, leaving a small gap where it used to be. Do this too often, and the overall system will destabilize eventually. Alright, maybe you shouldn't talk about your theories about how the world is going to end. No, nothing's going to happen because the portal was used a few times. I just hope humanity is aware of its implications. Maybe we can collaborate. I certainly hope so. Your researchers, sorry, your researchers seem to know what they're doing. I just wish I could be a part of it. With everything that's going on, the future looks incredibly exciting. What do you think's going to happen, Ipsum? Now you'll, you'll get him started, don't say I didn't warn you. No, Lorem, I'm sorry. If I was there right now, I'd have listened to you a long time ago. Fucked off home and had a KFC, but no, apparently that is not going to happen now. Well, the knowledge contained within your PDAs could propel innovation forward by unseen lens. Meaning a lot more experiments for you to do. Which would be terribly exciting. Personally, I'm more interested in the social implications. What do you mean? I don't expect there to be just a back and forth of ambassadors forever. Are you talking about colonies? Oh, I bet Lorem... Oh, sorry. Oh, I bet Lorem will jump at the opportunity to live in the human world. I'm not sure if that would be a good idea. It's very Mad Max Fury world, and we all know how much Neo Rambler hates that fucking film. Sorry. But the rage away. But the rage away. It's okay. It's fine. I'm, it's okay. I'm breathing. It's cool. Just... Okay. Why not? Obviously, such an endeavor would need a lot of preparation. We would need to learn about their culture and adjust appropriately. I'd expect we'd send an ambassador over there long before that will happen, though. We hardly know anything about their world. No, everything is still up in the air as far as diplomatic relations go. We have no idea what the situation could be like in just a week. Yes, it's also incredibly exciting. Oh, wait, no, there's a comet that's going to kill us all, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hindsight, Amy. <laughs> I don't get too excited, though, or else you're going to ruin your drawing. It's almost done, anyway. What do you think? Lorem leaned over, holding the paper to Ibsen. Ibsen, sorry, it's horrible cold. I'm so sorry. Ibsen, look at the paper closely. His gaze shifting back and forth between me and the paper several times. Oh, God. Oh, God, I'm so blocked up. So sorry. After a few seconds, he seemed to be finished with this evaluation. Uh, sorry, this is my professional opinion. This looks a little wrong. He pointed a sharp claw at the part of the paper Lorem was holding. Are you sure? Let me see. Well, I wasn't sure. I wouldn't have said it. Eh, uh, I think you're right. That I am. The man reached for his eraser, purging a few lines of the paper before he switched to his pen again. And it's done. See? What would you ever do without me? Don't think I'd hear as many explosions in the middle of the night. Now you were happy about it when you forgot to set your alarm that one time. <laughs> Suddenly, the sound of an alarm was sounded throughout the room. Oh, my experiment is done. Oh, I hope it's been roasted lovely this time. I burnt it a little, you see, and it didn't taste very good. But I've got to go. And there he goes. Charming fellow, isn't he? Ah, he sounds fun. He certainly keeps things interesting around here, and he's a good art critic. I can imagine. Anyway, it looks like we're done here. Oh, it feels good to be in a mood again. Would you like to stay for dinner? At least I could do to compensate for your lost afternoon. Let me see, what time is it? Oh, it's getting late and I probably shouldn't stay out this long. I'll have to decline for now. I see. Well, I better gotta do something for you at least. Oh, don't worry about it. Eh, maybe some other time. If you say so. Thanks for doing this, at any rate. It's been a huge help. I uh, know, don't worry about it. Alright. We should really get going now. I have to progress the story. Sure, take care. Cool, blind. Yes, what he was talking about in terms of... Um, what was it? Yeah, it's like... Um, I, to be fair, though, actually, I will say the, the, the theory of the world being flat and that when you get to the edge, rather than it being spherical where you just keep going round, you actually potentially enter a wormhole... That then takes you to the other side again, a bit like Pac-Man and all that. That that I was actually talking about this the other day with my family, or the family brought it up, saying, "Oh, there's that theory that the people believe that." My brother mentioned it. That was it. He said, "Oh, people still believe the world is flat." Now I know why, and there is a valid reason for that. So actually, next time they bring it up, I'll be like, "Aha! Well, I learned from a video game. It's all about torus shapes." So yeah, there you go. That bit I didn't know actually. So fair enough, game. As much as I complained about you give, uh, lecturing me about physics, the torus wormhole shape thing. I am aware of wormholes and that concept, but I didn't realise that you would apply it to a flat plane. That's something that I clearly just didn't pay attention to. Fair enough game. Well done. Kudos. Touche. Right, okay. Uh, meet with Remy, meet with Lorem, order some lunch, get some well-deserved rest. I'm going to get some well-deserved rest. I'm going to be boring for this one. In the end, I decided to spend the day relaxing in my apartment. I didn't know when things would start to pick up again, so I figured it would be better to get some rest as long as I still could. I perhaps should have seen one of the two characters, but I... Yeah, I, I, I've got to admit, I need to fucking rest, man. If we're going to replay this game again and again and again, it's okay. <gasps> Conflict Chapter 5. 
So yeah, if you if I'd made a mistake there because I haven't actually saved it, I can go back and change it if you want me to. But um, so I'll make a save file now. Uh, but if you want me to go back and and do that day, I will. But personally, I think just resting for now will be all right. <laughs> After a night of turbulent dreams, my consciousness returns to the shores of the waking world. Today is the day of the big fireworks. Wait, the fireworks? When was that happening? <laughs> go alone. Oh, wow. Who should I bring with me? I'll just bring myself. Wow. I'm shit, aren't I? Perhaps if I'd have spoken to Remy or Lorem again, I could have gone with them, but... Eh, never mind. Go alone, we will. Let's save the game to celebrate my sadness and stupidity. There we go. Boop. Go alone. While I was sure... Any of those I knew would agree to watch fireworks for me if I asked. I was decided to go alone, not wanting to impose on any if they hadn't asked me first. Actually, that's a very polite near ramble, and that's usually something I would do. After making some preparations for the day, I said I'd to experience these fireworks I heard so much about. I can't remember these. I'm sure they were mentioned. I've completely forgotten them. Was it to celebrate me, or... That is not me personally, but the human... I cannot remember, I forget. Never mind. Anyway, it doesn't matter. When I left my apartment, I realised just how eerily deserted the rest of the place felt. Oh, gee, now you're catching on. They really weren't kidding when they said everyone would watch the fireworks. I imagine there were a couple of designated places people gather for this purpose. I had no doubt they were crowded beyond belief. While I waited for the fireworks to start, I looked at the area around me. With no so oh, so I'm just going to watch them here, am I? Well, that's probably safe. With no so oh, oh, except we'll get attacked by the hash slinging slasher. That's what I'm calling the killer for now. Uh, with no solid sight, I realised I hadn't actually spent many nights outside and was reminded of the day I'd arrived here at my apartment in total darkness with only Remy by my side. Soon, the total stillness was broken with the sound of the first rocket ascending, its explosion painting in a circular pattern in the sky. I don't know how fireworks work, game. Eh? More rockets followed, the quantity and frequency steadily increasing. Yay! At least we saw a static image of it. I was just going to say, the, the game developer couldn't afford to, to animate it, but they, they did. That's nice. Bit weak fireworks, though, like the explosions are quite quiet, aren't they? But oh well. As the explosions battered my ears, a terrible realization hit me. Considering how public of an event this was and how everyone will be watching the fireworks, now would be the best time for Reza to make his move. Not only was the village basically deserted, but the sounds of the fireworks would also overshadow any gunshots, giving him as much security as he'd ever have. As the portal had been repaired by the administrator, Reza would have no trouble making his getaway, and I was sure the, I, was, I was the only one who would knew. Who knew? Why? But did the administrator fix the portal? But wait, what? Did he say he was going to do that? Fuck me, I've forgotten so much. I ran to my apartment to briefly consider calling the police as I grabbed a few things. However, I soon remembered that they were not only already understaffed, but I might waste precious time if I tried to do so. Plus, I might also get them killed, because I have that weird knack of doing that. I arrived at the portal just a few minutes later. Couldn't help but be glad that it was still turned off and didn't appear to have been used recently. But it meant Reza was still here, somewhere. I looked around, thinking about where he could be, or if it was worth waiting for him here, when I saw something at the corner of my eye. <gasps> was it fireworks? Hesitating, I drew nearer. Oh, bollocks. God damn, well, that's gunshot wounds, isn't it? Oh, no! Oh, bollocks! That is, isn't it? I thought I'd... Oh, no. Oh, fuck a duck. I checked Sebastian for any signs of life and found nothing. However, his body was still warm. Shit! Reza was here very recently, but he hadn't used the portal just yet. Why? Sebastian's guard post was not just for the portal itself, but also the surrounding area. Since Reza was already here, he'd probably have some unfinished, unfinished business very close by. The underground building. The administrator told me all about the prowess of the generations with, uh, generators within it. It probably hadn't been hard for Reza to guess the same, or to try stealing them from a place he knew would be even more deserted than the rest of the village was right now. He also didn't have far to go from the portal. All things considered, it was the only option that made sense to me. I could have waited for Reza here, but in the end, I decided it would be better to meet him underground. Yeah, because then you cut any chances of escaping, you numb nuts. If there was going to be a confrontation, I'm sure I'd have the advantage in a more crowded space. I don't think he would, but whatever. Even in the darkness, it was easy for me to spot the site where they had unearthed the building's entry as it was in a roped-off area that I'd seen from afar before. I can't believe he's fucking dead, man. Shit. That definitely gunshot wounds. It was well lit, though, by the way. When I entered the building, I was met by a long, illuminated hallway that was lined with doors on both sides. Since the lights were already on, Reza had to be very close. I wasn't surprised that the building still having electricity, since the generators were also powering the portal. <gasps> One of the doors opened, and out came Reza, carrying a large cardboard box. When he spotted me, he set it on the ground. Ah, near Ramble! You're here! 
You know how glad I am to see you. I wanted to try and try to contact you, but I couldn't with someone tailing you the whole time. But talking can wait. Now that you're here, we've got everything. Come on, help me with this. Let's get out of here. No. No? What are you talking about? I'm not doing anything until you answer a few questions. You want to talk now? <laughs> sure, why not? Probably got a few hours if we wanted to. <laughs> None of them will disturb us here. We could even get the backup generator as well after we send this one over. Where did you realise we were in the past? How did you know about the comet? I've known for a while. It's what I wanted to talk to you about when we met at the portal. How about you? Only recently found out. Looking back, it just seems so obvious to me now. I'm not sure how exactly you figured it out, but there are so many damn clues when you think about it. I mean, how could a supposedly completely different independent civilization speak the same language as us? Was this supposed to be an alternative reality? No, it was just a different time. Well, it could have been an alternate reality, numbnuts. Oh, quick save complete. Sorry, I didn't realise. My bad. When was there ever anything resembling these creatures on Earth? It's not hard to make the jump from dragons to dinosaurs when some of them look here pretty damn near identical to dinosaurs we knew about. And then there were also the prehistoric fruits, the plants, and the fact that the technological level is nearly exactly the same as our own past society. But well, we don't even have to think about that abstract. You just need to look at the sky. The sun, the moon, even the stars are the same. Constellations change over time, of course. But you know we could account for that stuff. You could have just pointed your PDA at the sky and it would have told you the time period, including the imminent threat of being eradicated. You could have even seen the meteorite in the sky and how it would change its position day after day. Are you done being condescending? I guess so. You killed those dragons, Reza! What a brilliant deduction, Sherlock. Why did you do it? Do you really need me to spell it out? I thought better of you. After I found out the truth about this place, I just waiting for the generators we were owed was not an option anymore. It would have taken who knows how long, but I didn't intend to stay a day longer than necessary. You wouldn't believe how hard it was for me to acquire some generators. Some of the dragons don't go down easily. But who cares that they got their back uh, they got who cares they got back the generators I stole? With just this one, we won't need any of the others. How could you do this? How could I do this? Let me ask you this. What harm is there really in taking the generators when the whole civilization will be gone in a few weeks anyway? The ones I killed just died a little earlier than scheduled. Even that creep hadn't shown up. Sorry, even if that creep... I can't read tonight. I apologise, I'm that tired. Even if that creep hadn't shown up and interrupted our meeting, we wouldn't have had the time for them to make the generators for us. How about we don't let them all die? They aren't going to be extinct anytime soon, if that's what you're concerned about. I paid the hatchery another visit before I came here. With the right persuasion, I think we'll have plenty of reasons to keep at least some of them around. Bodyguards, border patrols, weapons, even as pets or companions, as long as we make the necessary changes. See, it's not as bad as you might think. I'm not just going to abandon them like that, only for the whole civilization to be wiped out. Get your priorities straight, Neo Ramble. Next you'd rather starve, just because you suddenly empathise with a steak, and you're not satisfied just starving by yourself. No, you're going to let all of us starve because you want to impose your morals on everyone. Since when do you think that you get to have any say in this? You know why you're here. What you're proposing is treason and you know the consequences. Personally, I don't mind if you want to stay here. You know I don't care about corporal punishment. You see, I've got this gun. Just let me through. You can do whatever you wish. I can't do that, Reza. I see how it is. They've told you they need this generator to stop the comet, huh? And how you've become their lackey. Don't tell me you've been drinking up with what they've been telling you. You know they have as much of a vested interest in this whole thing as humanity does, that I, or you do, or at least used to. Don't you think they wouldn't do the same thing if it was their families on the line instead of ours? Their entire world is on the line here. They live in perfect harmony, with their perfect green energy source, and no reason for wars or conflicts, yada 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 yada. We had that too, and you know what happened to them? Of course you do. This is such an idiotic trope, you know. Random person meets weird natives, learns their ways, and then ends up saving them. What do they need you for, huh? Maybe they're going to be extinct for a reason if they can't save themselves. You know of our suffering, yet we'll let them have it. I don't care what happens to them, but unlike you, I was at least trying to save humanity. At any cost. We have the solution right here. And you want to get philosophical now? Don't you think we deserve this? They've had it for who knows how long. Now it's time for us. Not like this. Do you think I like it? If there was a different way, I would have spent the last few weeks doing what you didn't. We don't live in this fairy tale world of yours, where there's this perfect solution to everything. You should know that. Just being here for a few weeks must have messed you up. I think I know why. You got too used to all the comforts they have here. You actually don't care if they all die back home, do you? As long as you can stay here, in this perfect little world of yours, you've discarded everything and everyone back home and replaced it with this. Maybe it is because you just don't have a life back home. I can even understand that a little. <laughs> of course, it would be nice just to stay here, where they have everything that we don't, but being here also reminded me of everything I hated about our world as it used to be. 
the pettiness and the politics. Sorry about the solar flare, what you want, but it leveled the playing field and gave people like us a chance to make a difference. For all our efforts, what did we get? A vote that was meaningless in the sea of stupidity and lies. Now everyone has to pull their own weight. We make the rules. You of all people should understand. Of course they wouldn't. They haven't experienced how it is to live like we do now, to see the world burn and everyone you know die around you. And because I have, I won't let the same thing happen to them. How many do you think died back home just in the two weeks you've been here because we don't have power for the hospital, huh? Do you think those victims aren't worth mentioning, or do you just do, do you just care about the few dragons I killed? Our city's the last bastion of civilized society in a world where nothing else is left. Maybe you have forgotten about them, but I haven't. How many of us do you think will still be there in a month, a year, or are they just statistics to you? The same could be said for the dragons. What do you want to do? Talk me down from doing this and then what? It's too late anyway. You think they're just going to let us go after what I've done? Fat chance. Whatever you may think, you'll find that our leaders back home agree with my course of action. Why are you telling me this? Because I expect you to join me. That is not going to happen. And you call yourself an ambassador? This generator is the only thing we need for our city to survive. How can you even argue about this? The dragons also need that generator and I'll do what is necessary to stop you if I have to with my finger that looks like a gun. So that makes you judge, jury and executioner. Pfft, what a wonderful set of morals you have that near ramble. You only need to wait until the comet has passed safely. You think you can stop the comet and you need this generator to do that? Pfft, well yeah, alright, sure. And if your plan fails, that's not only this world gone, but we also lose any and all hope to save our own. We're so close now. We can't risk anything by waiting for your crazy plan. We're back home, they're dying by the minute. I will not let you. You only want to save your own two-faced hide because you don't want to face the consequences of what you did. Ooh, burn. <laughs> Why are you laughing about this? Because it's a joke. It must be. I'm the one with the gun and you thought you could just waltz in here and lecture me. <laughs> Listening to you was fun and all, but the grown-ups must get back to work now. I mean, what are you going to do? You can't stop me now anyway. Actually, I can. I opened the cloak I was wearing to reveal an imp improvised bomb I had made from a generator. Where the fuck did I learn to do that? When did that happen? I have I missed something here? What is this? You showed me how to do it with the little trap you set at the farmhouse. That wasn't intended for you. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You set it for someone. You said it to kill. Oh man, I'm suddenly becoming bad at all of a sudden. Must have done this during my rest day. Something like that. Where'd you even get a generator? <laughs> After the police reclaimed the generators you stole, it was easy for me to take one when I was alone in the department. Just in case. Because my character did that off screen. I set the bomb on the ground between us. With it and me, Reza in the exit, he would have to listen now. So what's the plan? <laughs> I'll tell you what's going to happen. You leave the generator and you turn yourself in. You know what? I think you're bluffing. If you set off that bomb, not only do we both die, but you destroy the generators as well. And with them, any chance of saving either world? You'd never do that. He pulled out his gun and pointed at me as he slowly started closing the distance between us. How many bullets did you have in that gun, by the way? What's it going to be, near Rambo? Killing all of us? Just this world. Reza was right. In reality, the bomb provided no real leverage against him. If his goal was truly to save our city back home at any cost, he would not turn himself in. Even if the threat of setting off the bomb was a real one, his best chance would be to at least try to kill me now. I turned around and started running. Man, I'm fucking hell near. You go from being badass to... Oh, yeah, I thought of that. I'm so fucking dead. No! I heard gunshots. Immediately, I felt the most excruciating pain I'd ever experienced resonate through my arm. As I kept spreading as fast as I could, I heard a beeping sound that made me realise I had inadvertently activated the bomb when I was hit. <laughs> Fair enough. Out of bullets, Reza was not far behind me as we both scrambled towards the exit. Fucking hell near, man. I think... Jesus. You're complaining to Reza, he's a fucking sadistic bastard, and yet you're like, Hmm, Bryce got killed by an improvised explosive made from a generator. Good idea. Fuck, man, we're so fucked up. Just as I reached the outside, the bomb went off, the explosion battered my ears and struck away, sent me flying. I collided with the ground and immediately felt a hail of debris. I cowered, waiting for it to die down. After a few seconds, I turned around and looked at the sky where the fireworks still painted patterns in the stars. With one hand, I reached toward my injured arm, only to find that it wet my blood from my bullet wound. My whole body was numb. But I could not give up now. I slowly got up, looking around the area to get some perspective of the situation. Not far from where I was, I saw Reza lying on the ground. He wasn't moving. Ooh. Ooh, that's... yeah. As I got closer, I spot the gun next to him. I won't let them find this. 
I took it with me, hiding it in one of my pockets as I started to make my way towards the portal with slow and uneasy steps. Oh, we're getting blurry. I was shaking, my vision was blurry. Every inch of movement felt like a new and harder chore than the last. Eventually my legs gave in and I collapsed to the ground. Now oh, they're going to find the fucking gun now, aren't they, you dick? Yay! Somebody got blown up! Yay! I resigned to my fate as I watched the night sky, illuminated by the colourful explosives of the firework. You only got shot in the arm, you pussy! Suddenly I was lifted off the ground and so I opened my eyes and saw the masked face of the administrator. I could just not let it happen. I had to stop it. I had to try somehow. The administrator started moving, carrying me. Unfortunately, it seems that... Uh, oh, I can't remember the voice I gave him. Fuck it. Unfortunately, it seems that like the generators were destroyed as well. So this is how it ends. With humanity doomed to fade into history and the dragons facing extinction. All hope is not lost. It never was. What are you going to do? I'm going to send you back in time. We'll just try again. And maybe we'll do better next time. Oh. By now we had arrived at the portal. The administrator gently set me down before moving towards the portal's controls. You'll probably forget most of what happened. The teleportation has to do that sometimes, especially when someone is transported back several times in quick succession. Maybe you'll remember a thing or two, and maybe they'll help you do better next time. Maybe. I'll see you on the other side. So, are we now going back to the very beginning of the go uh, the very beginning of the game, then? I heard the sound of the portal starting to do its work as the numbness and pain suddenly left my body. The things I'd experienced and things I hadn't flashed across my mind as I was teleported. I felt free. Oh, is the game restarting? Oh, boy. Right, okay, so um, we didn't get to shag Anna in the end then. Well, that sucks. <laughs> okay, so I guess that is ending one then. Fair enough. I mean, to be fair, though, this isn't, this isn't the end, though, is it? So we've got to do it again then so this doesn't happen. So this is, I, I assume this ending then is like the default ending that you get. I don't know. Anyway, let's skip through these credits. I can't skip through the credits. Oh, it, come on, I can read the credits at the end. Can I please let me skip it? I know people want to be credited for their work. I'm not saying they shouldn't, but... Come on! I can't skip it. Can I press return? Yes, I can! <laughs> Keyboard. Oh, bollocks, no, it's a fake out. All right, well, anyway, while the credits are playing then, I could always fast forward it to the end. Um. So we've got to go back in time and do it again then. So I'm wondering now how this is going to work then. Do I have to start a new game? Or do I... Does the game take take care of that and create a new save file? I'm not sure. What's the answer? I don't know. But anyway, um, yeah, that really sucks. But um, I'm not going to give up going after Anna. We're going to go after Anna. I guess uh, we just got to repeat it all again. It's going to be a right pain in the ass. I suppose I don't have to read certain bits, I guess, again. So that's that's a, that's a positive until things change. I don't know. Maybe I will read things out again, but I won't put the voices on. Just because, A, it's hurting my throat a bit. Because I'm not a voice actor. My voice acting shit anyway. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll, um, we'll carry on. But all right. Um... What I'll do then, I'll go off screen and I'll wait for the game to finish the credits and stuff. It might be nearly finished anyway, but I'll wait for the game to, to finish its credits. Although it might be coming to the end now, I don't know, it's talking about sponsors and stuff. Come on game. You nearly finished? Please let me scare. Yeah, here we go, we're at the end anyway. Okay, that's fine. So yeah, so we got to go back and sort shit out. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so this is... To me, this isn't the end of the game. This is just, okay, we've got this point. Now we've got to go and do these things again. I just want to know how the game's going to make us do that. That's what I'm intrigued by. We've seen the neutral ending. Okay, that's fine. The expansion is one of the many different endings of Angels with Scaly Wings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all bollocks. So we all know it's not part... It's all part of the game. Uh, you'll have to play through the game a number of times. During the next playthrough, you may want to make different choices. You may even find the information you gain this time to be helpful. Sometimes you may even notice that prior choices have changed the character or aspect of the game's world permanently. At any rate, feel free to employ the game's skip buttons uh, generously, as by default they will only skip text that you've already seen, making some sequel flavors much more palatable. Can you find all the different endings? You've seen your first ending. So we actually have to start the game again properly then. Right. Okay. Let's give it a go then. Okay, yeah, so this is what we're supposed to be. Right, that's fine then. That's fine. So we're back to the first chapter then. Righty-ho, that's fine. Right, okay, yeah, so yeah, basically you just got to keep going. Yeah, so like I said, this isn't really... Although it's making out to be 
Oh yeah, there's multiple endings and shit. It's not. It's it's just one whole thing. It's it's a bit of a con, really. But okay, that's fine. No problem, Chifo. Right from an easy dreams. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm not gonna read this just yet. Uh, no, I really should be reading this, though, shouldn't I? Okay. There's Sebastian again. Right, okay. What I'm going to do then, I'm going to pause the game here and I'm going to end the video here. I know it sounds a bit of like a cop out. The only reason why is I'm just not sure how to play this. So, um, uh, after you've watched this, if you have, I want you to leave me in the comments section. Do you want me to read through all this text again? A bit like in Doki Doki Literature Club. Or do you want me to skip through it till we get to different points? Um, like I said, the game has got skip features. So I get, I guess we can use that. So basically, if you want me to read through this text again, we will. If you want me to skip through the text, let me know. And I'll get you, I'll do a bit of practice off screen. So I can do that. Um, so that we can get to those choices again. Um, I'm basically still going after Anna. That's the only thing that I am going to say. I still want to get, get with Anna, if that makes sense. Um, but I would like to, um... Other than that, I will do my best to sort of get the good endings and stuff like that. So do let me know. Um, but for now, can I say thank you very much for watching this if you have done. I did enjoy that and I thought that was quite a, a dramatic way of ending the game. Um, but yeah, so yeah, basically we'll do this again. Um, I want to try and get with Anna again. But if I really should be trying out different things, like I should really spend some more time with other characters this time and leave Anna to the sidelines, do let me know. Um, not asking you to give me the correct route or anything, just give me some hints and tips on what I should really optimise doing first. You guys and girls are good at doing that anyway. Um, and again, when it comes to text like this, just let me know about skipping it and all that sort of stuff, and uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, so what I'll do is I will save the game uh, at empty 20 slot. Okay, and um, yeah, next time then we'll carry on. So um, can I say thank you very much for watching if you have done, and um, take it easy, have a good one, hope you're all well. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.